question in the glory is, number one, it's never still. It's always moving on to something else. Moving, moving. Number two, it's always in expansion. It moves so that it may claim more territory. Expansion is always God's view in mind with the glory. Amen. Now, Ruth Heflin said that one praises until the praise is turned into worship. Then one worships until the worship is turned into glory. Now, I believe that. I believe that you praise God until it gets the anointing comes on you. You don't have to feel God to praise Him. You don't have to feel the anointing to praise Him. Some people say, oh, I'll lift my hands if God tells me to. God ain't going to tell you. He might sometime, but for the most part, 90% of the time, you just going to have to throw your hands up there and bless Him anyway. You say amen. you got to lift them hands even when the rims do. And the flower bin's empty. Say amen. You've got to lift them hands even when your back aches. Even when you got stomach aches. You've got to lift them hands even when the whole house is in an uproar. And I ought to lift them in the middle of that uproar. Right in the middle of everybody just starts saying hallelujah and thank you Jesus. You don't need to feel the Spirit to praise God. You can praise God any time you want to. But you can't worship Him without feeling the Spirit. Your praise is, 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 is comely to the upright. Somebody say amen. It beautifies you. It makes you come into a greater measure. It makes you come. Everybody starts out by praising. You've got to praise. Praise waiteth for thee, O Lord, in Zion. God inhabits. Amen. Hello, the praises of His people. So a church that's going to be a glory church has got to be a praising church. It can't be a solemn assembly of funeral gatherings on Sunday and on Wednesday. It can't, people ain't going to, people that's hungry for the glory of God ain't going to visit a church but about one time where nobody never praises God. They're looking for somebody who unashamedly will bless His holy name. Can you say praise the Lord? you got to get over these fears and these hang-ups in your head. I mean, somebody would be looking at me if I raise mine. So what if they look at you raise them anyway? Somebody be looking at me if, 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 if I say it matter how they, well, let them look on, bless God. They look at everybody else, why shouldn't they look at you? You're not exempt from the rest of it. Just go on and be counted with us. Praise God. You've got to praise Him. But let me tell you something. There comes a moment when even praising Him ain't enough. Amen. And if you don't soon go on over into birth and a worship spirit in you, you'll feel like the only way you'll get anywhere is get a, roof, a, a ladder and climb the roof or something. I mean, it'll just feel like you're going to bust every spring you've got in you if you don't get into a deeper route. And about the time that you think you just can't praise Him enough, you transfer up into a higher level and a higher dimension, and that is called worshiping Him in the spirit and in the truth. Somebody say praise the Lord. In those moments, just standing there with your mouth shut will almost make you fall out under the power. Just in the times when the worship is so moving in your heart that you're scared to make a hmm because you don't want that that glory of that hour to depart off of you. There were times in here Thursday night I didn't even want to turn my neck because I didn't want nothing disturbing that glorious feeling that I felt. And how many has ever been in that shape? I've been praying before when I got so caught up in God I didn't want to turn around. I was scared of what I might see if I had to turn around. I knew that something had walked up in that room where I was at. Glory to God. I've been in this church Praise God, praying before and not bother turning the lights on, just stay in the dark and lay down here in the floor and pray. And all of a sudden it got so spooky, I knew there was something there besides just me. There was another glory and another presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Only now we're coming to a knowledge of God where we're not scared and we're not afraid. We want to see the glory of the Lord manifest today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the Bible tells us that this glory coming in was so that when we left here, we was dealing with the fact that Ichabod had been written over that old priesthood house, that old uh, order of Eli, that, that order that, that uh, uh, profaned the temple, profaned the money, and profaned the people. That old doctrine that was crooked and held us under by, The Bible said Ichabod came and the glory lifted off of that and the ark moved out into the field of battle. But the Philistines captured it, took it home. Then trouble moved in on them. Now they took two uh, mama cows that's got little babies uh, and those babies are milking uh, hallelujah their 
they're drinking from their mother. And the, the, the Bible said they took the cows and made the babies turn back the other way. Oh, it was against the rules of nature for them milk cows to keep going the other way. Everything in them wanted to go to them babies. Uh, but the Holy Ghost got on those cows, those oxen, and made them slowly and in line walk that presence and that glory of God back home to the people. And there at Peshimesh where they were oppression in the field, the women and the men looked up and behold, the ark of the Lord was coming up the road. And they got to rejoicing. And they got happy. They got too happy. They pulled the mercy seat off. And looked in. Hello church. And God killed them. Smote them. You say how come? Because the law without mercy. The wages of sin. Death. Praise God. You can't preach too much mercy. You can't preach too much grace. You can't preach too much favor. But all them old preachers today harping on these brothers is getting on TV and preaching grace. I, I, hallelujah. Thank God somebody's saying grace. And I don't mean blessing the food either. I mean offering us a little grace here. Glory to God. But then you got the other side of that coin. They get on their talk shows and they get on their daily telecast and they come against all them grace preachers. And they say, Lord, they're giving them people too much freedom. They're giving them too much liberty. Oh, hallelujah. Well, the Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. 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 But these people found out that if you don't have that liberty, and you don't have that grace, and you don't have that joy of serving Him, you lift all that off and you'll die, bless God. That killed them right there. Fifty-something thousand of them were smoked that day. In and the people at Bessemes called over and sent word to Kirgit Jerob and told the Levites at Kirgit Jerob, get out here and get this ark and take it somewhere where somebody knows how to treat it, how to do, how to deal with it. And they sent the Levites home and they got the ark and they carried it up in Kirgit Jerob and set it on a high hill. And Eliezer was anointed by God to keep the ark. But even though the ark was restored, even though the glory had come home, Israel turned its sights to another dimension of the flesh and said, we will have a king to rule over us after the order of the flesh. Amen. And Saul, of course, was raised up. And in all of Saul's days, he never sought to bring home the ark of God. He never looked after wanting the glory of God. He never sought after the presence of Jesus. In fact, in the end of his time, the Bible said he built an order, and this was the first order that Saul ever built unto the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Samuel got up in the end of his days and told all of Israel, oh, he was God's man. He had the glory. He heard the sound. He had the voice of God. He stood up and told all the people in that day, if I've rocked you, tell me now. If I've done you wrong, tell me now. If I've ever lied to you, tell me now. And all of them said, oh, Father, you've never lied to us. You've never, not one of your words has ever failed to the ground. He said, then lest I sin by not praying for you, I'm going to continue to ask that the favor and the blessing of God will rest upon you. Aren't you glad that even when you've run your own way and done your own thing and were going opposite of God, there was somebody named Samuel in your life who stood up and said, lest I sin by ceasing to pray for you, I'm going to ask God, bless them, favor them, keep them, glorify them. Well, hallelujah. And so the Bible said that whenever uh, David, oh, hallelujah, was born, that his daddy put him out to the sheep. Hallelujah. And all the other brothers were men of war. David was singing and shouting and praising God and feeling the flow and finding green pastures. And God said to Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, how long are you going to mourn over Saul seeing I rejected him? Fill your horn with oil and go and go to the house of Beth, to Jesse the Bethlehem I for I've called thee to anoint his son as king in room and Saul said hallelujah. And the Bible said that Samuel got up. It had been six months since Samuel had come out of his house. 
And he came to town, and when he got to town, the people, praise God, came out and said, Do you come peaceably, or do you come to kill us all? Do you come to prophesy the word of the Lord against us all? And he said, I come peaceably. He walked in Jesse's house. He said, we ain't going to sit down to eat until I find what I've come after. There's somebody in this house that's going to tote the glory. Let me tell you, there's somebody in this house that's going to tote the glory. There's somebody in this house that's going to bring back the glory. There's somebody in this house that's going to bring in a move of the glory. Somebody right here in this place this morning has been marked and ordained by God to raise up a generation who will see the glory of the Lord manifest. Amen. The Bible said he went through all of them. My God, there were straddling boys, big boys, rough boys. And he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. And every time he said that, God said, it ain't him. Finally, the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, you're looking at the outward appearance and I'm looking on the heart. I'm looking for a man after my own heart. That ain't a one man band show. That's a corporate people. There's a man stretched from David's day all the way to this day that God's been raising up who's after his own heart. Amen? And finally, Samuel says, is this it? And he said, oh, no, I've got one more, but he's a ruddy one. Hallelujah. He's beautiful, but he ain't strong. How come he's so beautiful? Because he beautifies a meat right. with salvation. Somebody right. say praise the Lord. Yeah. How come him so uh, shouting like the rest of them don't? Because while they've all been in war, he's been down there. Hello. He couldn't even bathe. Yeah. He did them sheep wouldn't follow him. Praise God. He wasn't the one that had the big crowd. He had a crowd all right, bleeding sheep. They laid all over him while he tried to sleep at night. Because yeah. they could smell their mamas and daddies on him. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Right. I'm telling you, uh, Jesse's got a house full of sons right now. Yeah. And they think just because they got shiny armor yeah. and no soul that they're going to get picked. They're standing there in line right now, straightening everything up. Yes, sir. Yeah. I belong to my denomination. They're going to promote me to the biggest church. Wow. I'm preaching better than you're shouting right now. You know I am. This one over here said, I know I'm a prophet. Hello. God's going to give me somebody to carry my brief. I don't need nobody to carry my brief in case I need somebody to carry the glory. I'm carrying my Bible. Yeah. I'm preaching now. I'm told a notebook. Yeah. And I sure wish to God somebody come follow me that is toting the glory. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I wipe my own brow. I just need somebody that can wipe some of that oil of God. Well, hallelujah to the Lord. Praise His mighty name. And the Bible said, when David come in, the Lord said, Samuel, rise and anoint David, the son of Jesse. To, oh, hallelujah. Glory. Saul, he was anointed with a vial. That's man-made. But Samuel anointed David with a horn of oil. Yes. Well, glory. Hallelujah. And how many know all through David's life the Lord would refer to him as the horn of my anointing. And in Psalm 92 and 10, David even declared, My horn shall thou exalt like that of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, we're not dealing with some little thing that just happened to fall into place. This is God's idea, God's plan. Amen. Brother Monroe wrote a book, said God's big idea. This is God's plan, folks, God's idea. He's always had an idea. He's moved through centuries, ages of time, generations and pedigrees uh, to find men who could carry the glory of His presence uh, and make Him known uh, in this earth among His people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that whenever he poured that oil on David, glory to God. David didn't run out and tell everybody and have cards made up and tell everybody, I am God's anointed. I am the apostle. I am the prophet. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, yet that government's system 
coming down in the church world. Amen. God ain't got no big eyes and little U's, brother. We're all in one body. We're all in one mind, one faith. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible said that whenever David come in, God, I want to tell you, God's man of faith and power now is a corporate son. Not some man coming to town. Hello. It's got a big name. But it's everybody that's named under that name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what David did? He went back to the sheep. We don't like that. How can the glory come on anybody if it goes back to the sheep? Same way it'll come on any man. Bull rake yards, clean toilet, dig holes, back the floors, and any of you who will do the same thing. You can't get out there in the street and stretch your stomach. You ain't got nothing to stretch. Just be who you are and let God be who He is and He'll do the work. That's how you rest in Him. You go on living and getting it done and the time comes when all of a sudden Elijah comes up there behind you and throws that mantle on your shoulder and when he does everything changes from that day on. Glory to God. But you ain't going to get the mantle if you ain't out there pushing the plow. Get out there and stay with God. Do what he called you to do. You know what God called me to do? Preach. You know what I do? I preach. Amen. Three times a week I show up to my post and I preach what he gives me and somewhere one of these time when I'm up here speaking to you like I am now, Elijah is going to come up behind me and cast that metal on me and it's going to fall on all of you yeah. and this place ain't never going to be the same yeah. again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean from that moment on, it'll bust out. It'll outgrow. It'll outgive. It'll outshine. Yeah. And I don't know exactly when that day is. So if you think to plow. No, sir. I'm going to show up and I'm going to plow because I want to be in that time when the Lord throws that mantle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Lord, I feel that. David went back to them sheep. Why? Because that's where God gave him his songs. That's where God taught him how to praise. That's where the Lord taught him how to have a cup that runs over and how to have a head. That's what the, do you know before Samuel ever poured a drop of oil on David's head, he was out there singing by the Holy Ghost, Thou anointest my head with oil. And he don't know. And Samuel, don't you reckon he's singing something of the nature when some one of them brothers kicks him under that tree and says, Hey boy, get up. Why? The seer's here. What's he want? I don't know what he wants, but he said he ain't going to sit down to you. We're starving to death. Would you come on so we can eat? He gets in that house. And brother, that psalm ain't just a faith proclamation no more. But reality is kicked in. And now the oil's flowing down his head. Somebody say amen. And then he found something better than that. In Psalm 133, it got better than that. He said, it didn't just flow on my head. It'll flow on the beard. It'll flow off of the skirts of the garment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible said whenever, um, after David got on, went back with his sheep. And then this spirit came and tormented Saul. Hallelujah. I mean, God can move you to the palace in one flat day without anybody in there knowing knowing who you are, knowing your name, or knowing your address. You don't have to send resumes in the kingdom. Just, I'm not talking about getting a regular job. Now I'm talking about God's promotion. Stay faithful where you are and believe God has got a specific spot for you where your overcoming life will begin. Right. Hold faithful to that vision and watch God make it manifest. David ain't got no king, no palace on his mind. He don't even know if he's going to be king or not. Here Samuel is pouring oil on him. David just as stinks like them sheep. He's got to go back five minutes after Samuel gets done. And what I know of many a man and woman of God, they would have said, bless God, I ain't going down there to them sheep. I got anointed to be the, the king and I'm going up there and take the throne. Yeah, they would have cut his head off. They would have killed him in that gate. I want to tell you, I've had prophecy and promises and so have you. And you had to go right back to shoveling the same old mess you always did right after you got the word. It didn't feel right. You kind of didn't like it. Thought you was like me. You thought God would change it in 24 hours. 
but he didn't do it that way. But I can tell you right now, there's a day coming up and an hour coming up when everything that is said of me and you is going to come home and roost around us and everybody is going to see the goodness of the Lord and we're the ones in the land of the living. Don't go back to them sheep. Five minutes ago, the word of the Lord said, I was a prophet. I was a king. Now I'm down here. No, that wasn't the way he was. I'll tell you what he did do. He killed a lion and he killed a bear. He tested his anointing right there where he was. Don't wait till you get up in front of some big old crowd to test out your glory. Preach to them five like it's five hundred. Preach to them thirty like it's three thousand. My God, get anointed now. I think some preachers really live, study, pray, and act way below their potential just because they ain't got enough people to satisfy them. They don't study to preach deep messages. They think they'll do that when they get a big crowd to preach to. But I'll tell you, I studied to preach to ten just like I was going to preach to ten thousand. I've always been that way. Look, I never did want to go to church and hear some man give me whatever he's cropped up out of the yard on the way over here. I want to know he's been with God. I want to know he's heard the word of the Lord. I don't care if he's just going to talk to two people. I want to hear the glory on him. But I tell you everywhere, there's people, there's big shots that's done shot out. And they're in little holes somewhere and they're so arrogant and so snotty, if I may use a vernacular, and so so uh, smart alecky that you couldn't even have a conversation with them. Brother, they know it all and ain't never outgrow the, the, the little pen. Yeah. And you wonder, with all that knowledge, why wouldn't God let them outgrow the little pen? I'll tell you why. Because they won't get busy right where they're at and let the kingdom and the anointing of God use them David said, I sat out there and that lion came up to me and wanted to get one of them sheep. He said, I got up under the anointing of God right out there in that field. I didn't have a crowd of people to go sing about me in the town. But right there on that field, me and the Lord slew that lion, slew that bear. And then when it got time to get the giant, old David said, under the glory of God, we'll get him too. When he did get to the giant, it wasn't the qualified. It wasn't the noble. Now I'm preaching something here that you better hold on to the rest of your life. The Bible says not many noble, not all oh, glory, not many wise. Isn't that what he said? Has he, has he what? Called. He had not called many noble, many wise. But he's chosen the foolish things. Yeah of this world to confound the wise. Hello, church. When David came out, all the nobility had failed in that hour. Saul was the nobility of that day. He was king. Next in line were his, his very armor bearers, his right arm men, and every one of them failed. Hello? Next in line were his soldiers of war, which included David's big scrapping brothers. Are you listening to me? And you know what? It failed. Everything failed, but the glory never fails. The anointing never fails. The power never fails. When David got there, he had no armor. He had no right, nobility. Right. He only had a few songs God had given him and there was some good testimonies of a lion and a bear. Hallelujah to God. And then they took that pure piece of glory and took him into the house of the noble and tried to clothe him with nobility called Saul's armor. But when they turned David loose, he couldn't walk in that armor. He couldn't function in that I'm going to tell you, when you get among that noble religion, you find that you can't walk in that order. You can't function in that order. You can't listen to it. You can't be a part of it. Why? Because you've not proved it. Right. This you proved. The Bible said that when David came in, he told them, take that off of me. I have proved it. Right. He reached back there and pulled a sling out. Hallelujah. Went out there, hollered across that creek and said, hey, 
You come with spirit and sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hello, church. Amen. So I'm telling you, when all that happened, every day, I mean, this is good life. Listen here, when everything, when everything got through and all of the regalia marched out, shining in their royal apparel, it's why were they shouting, because Goliath is dead. Where's David at? Who killed him, David? Did where is David? Over in the sheep. Yeah. What well, might that do it? He, 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 that's the same as saying somebody got up and preached to 10,000 people. And you think, oh, they don't ever need to, they'll never be that way again. Then you go over and hear them, they ain't even got a hundred. They're among the sheep. But you better remember this 90% of Revelation. Hear me and hear me well. 90% of Revelation, 90% of new dimensional truths. 90% of all the breakthroughs come not when you're among the thousands and the multitude, but when you're among the sheep. You better take life lessons of what you're walking through right now, my brother and sister, because it is right here where the war is won for final. This is final keeps. We're not playing mama pubs. We're playing for keeps. Everything we get now, we get it for keeps. We're not yeah. here to give and take. We're here to keep what God gives us and not let no man take it from us. Hold fast thy crown. Yeah. Lest any man take it from me. How many here is at this Amen. morning? All the battles you're going to win, all these little trials and your tests you're going through and you're learning all that stuff, this is what's going to keep you afloat when everything turns and God reigns on your parade and the blessing of God overtakes you. You're going to look back and say, my God, what I learned when I went through that stuff. Oh, God, what I learned when I had to make it that way. When I had to believe you from hand to mouth. Huh? When it didn't look like it was going to happen in the last minute before it all fell apart. Somehow God made a way where there seemed to be no way. It's that kind of stuff that puts you in a place where when that battle does fall on you in double portion, you know how to function and operate under such a heavy anointing. Glory. Glory. Praise God. Nothing starts, but let me tell you something, everything that starts big fizzes out fast. You said, I don't believe that. Wouldn't you don't believe the Bible then because Solomon wrote his self and said, that inheritance God and quick doesn't last very long. No, no. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even the Paul taught us that the heir as long as he, the son, though he be an heir, deferred nothing from the servant. But it's under tutors and governors till the time appointed of the Father. Are you listening to me? And I want to tell you something. Every one of you individually, every one of you individually has a time appointed of the Father for a breakthrough. I don't mean just one of these breakthroughs in tomorrow you'll look hell in the face again. I mean a complete, total, absolute, without a shadow of a doubt, turn around where it don't turn back the same way again. I know by the Word of God. I know by the faith of God, but better than that, even in this very, this very moment, I know by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of truth in me, which is the Holy Ghost, that every person in this earth individually has been given a time appointed of the Father for a break forth and breakthrough in the divine, matured sonship <coughs> where you have overcome every adversary, every enemy, and have took the stronghold of Zion. And it is in that hour that you rule and reign and every enemy is under your foot and nothing is ever the same again. Amen. Amen. But just as well as that is so to every one of you individually, it is likewise so collectively. Collectively, this body, this assembly of people, this body knitted together in love and baptized by one spirit into one body has a divine, this very church has an order, a divine intervention period where God will take this thing off yeah. of our hands yeah. and make it work, flow, grow, expand, and, and He'll beautify everything around here. But I'm telling you that right now, you better learn how to get in the same glory among the sheep as you get in among the, the, the big stuff. The, the giant will come down, but he, before he comes down, why don't you go ahead and get rid of the lion and get rid of the bear? No, this is the way the glory works. The glory moves on you. You learn to operate in it. You learn to flow in it, hold nothing back. And then God will use you to bring other people into it. Can you say amen? All right. Now, whenever David went back to the sheep, then Saul got tormented. He couldn't sleep. 
And somebody said, I mean, this is crazy. He said, Saul, we know somebody. And said, uh, he's a anointed musician. He said, if he'll come play, all that spirit will leave you and you'll sleep. Well, who is he? Well, I'll go inquire. Yeah. Somebody come back and said, it's David. David who? Jesse's son, David. Yes, his son David comes and plays. Evil spirits leave Saul. Hello. Saul is renewed, renewed again. David goes back to the sheep. He goes back to the sheep after he plays evil spirits away from Saul. And he goes back to the sheep after Samuel's anointed with the horn of oil. And he goes back to the sheep after he's killed Goliath. Yeah. Somebody say amen. And after the slaughter of Goliath, Saul had said, David, I'll give you my for my daughter. Right? David said, that's fine. Then when he went to get her, Saul said, I will up the price. I want a hundred foreskins of, of the Philistine. David went and took his buddy down there and they got under the spirit and he got through. They had two hundred. <laughs> Brought them back and piled them up and told Saul, here's my, here's my dowry. Give me my wife. And from that day on, yeah. you see, from that day on, it was a head on yeah. collision. The flesh and the spirit. Could not get along anymore. Right. You've got to understand some of these people won't have anything to do with you anymore. That's the will of God. God's made it that way. Because they'd, they'd hold you back. In due time, you'll probably be restored with every one of them. If he wills it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, in, but, but for right now, you're still going to have to help the loss and move on. Right. Allow your plow, brother. Elijah's coming, and you've got to be ready to get that medal when he comes. Right. Don't you be running over there trying to make people patch things up. You just go on and serve God. God will take care of the rest of them. Can you say amen? amen. My God, people just get out and all over. They lay all over the place trying to get people to like them. I'll tell you right now, it ain't time for you to be hunting people to like you. It's time for you to be plowing. Any man plows and puts his hand to the plow and is always turned around and looking behind him to see whether anybody else is going to join him in it or not. He ain't fit for the kingdom. Isn't that what Jesus said? I don't care if you don't feel nobody join you. If you have to push that thing to your shoulders is sore. You believe God. You press on. You move on, brother, sister. Keep on. Yeah. So, the Bible, boy, this is good stuff. It's one of the Lord's given us. I didn't intend to go and, and stay here this long at all. But when, whenever Michael married Saul, that was trouble. Then, then I mean, married David. David's ducking javelins and dodging swords. And all of a sudden, Saul, who loves him, hates him. Why does he hate him? Because he sees that David ain't done one thing, but God loves him enough. And the glory yeah. is on him so good that he favors him. And let me tell you what people really hated about David. He had the same flaws they all did. He had the same mistakes they all did. But God favored him and loved him. And in spite of anything he did wrong, God blessed that boy and kept that boy and anointed that boy and increased that boy. Hell, old church. And I'll tell you today, they want somebody who's, uh, you know, who's just generally perfected in the flesh realm. But I'll tell you something better than being perfected in the flesh realm. And that's to have a heart that seeks after God. The Bible said that when at one time Michael put a dummy into bed and had David sent out through the window. That's the truth, to keep her father from killing her. And the father sent the soldiers over there to get David and bring him to him. And they went in that bedroom to get David and they found an old straw stuffed dummy laying in the bed. Read your Bibles. It wasn't David at all. Hey Amen. She said, he's sick. He's in the bed. They went in there. Saul said, come on. Told Saul, he's sick. He's in bed. Saul said, I don't care. I don't want him. Well, I won't kill him. Go get him. Bring him here. They went and got him. Can't you imagine the way they saw Luke when they come bringing that bag of a straw up there? And they said, hey, this is what was supposed to be in the end. Saul said, oh, Michael, I hate you as bad as I do David. Amen. And David ran. And David hid. And Saul chased him. And God would still deliver Saul into David's hand and David would weep and cry and say Saul is my father and I love him and I won't kill him and Saul would get up in the night and see David leaving with his sword over his shoulder where he could have cut his head off and then he would weep and cry under the anointing because he knew that God was with David when a man is well and in favor with God even his enemies are at peace with him hallelujah even them that don't like you will love you. I don't care if you like me, just love me. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people I don't like. Can't stand them. But I love them so good. Hallelujah. Well, I want you.
you to know there's a people of love in this place today that are coming alive to the fact that God is favoring. God is favoring Zion. Hallelujah. Amen. The set time to favor her is in heaven. Why? Because she's got the glory. Yeah. The glory. Are you hearing me? She's got the glory. The Lord told you, you know how David got his mighty men on me. I'm trying to get to Solomon so I start with him tonight. When he got his mighty men army, mighty men of battle army, and God sent them, and they were not strong, big old mean guys. They were depressed, despondent, destitute, poor, weak, sick, came to David, and the anointing on David's life got on their life. They prospered because he prospered. You want me to give you a biblical principle that will make this sound like I'm tooting my own horn and you can take it with whatever you want to If you want to prosper, pray for me to prosper. Pray for me to be blessed and God will bless every one of you just because I'm blessed. Do you believe you're of this house? Do you believe God put you here for a purpose? If you believe that and you believe God put me here, then every time you pray His blessing on me, you're heaping loads on yourself. Because it is a biblical fact that if the head of that house is took care of, everybody in that house will receive the anointing off of it. Do you know why I'm took care of as good as I have? It's because I served all my life under a man of God and whatever He told me to do, I've done it. If I liked it, I did it. If I totally disagreed with it, I did it. I never rebuked my elder. I never withstood him on anything. I was at his beck and call. If he called me and I had something to do, I dropped it and went and done what he told me to do. And because I favored that man of God, God is this day very much so blessing my life just because I gave way for the ministry. When you give way for the anointing and when you give way for the glory of God, God will see to it that you all Always have food on that table and clothes in that closet and gas in that car because if you take care of what God's given you for your soul, He'll prosper you in every way. Yeah. I'm telling you, that doesn't just work for me. That's for any man of God that the Lord puts over your life. You pray that God will help them and God will help you just for praying for them. Hello. And so... Whenever David blesses me and they grew mightily, God said to David in the fire, Now, David, I want you to go to Judah. I want you to go to Hebron. When he got to Hebron, he found out something. Everybody that hated him didn't hate him no more. Right. Everybody he thought didn't like him fell in love with him. Yeah. Everybody he thought was against him was welcoming him. Yes. Read your Bible. He come into Hebron. I'm seeing that. Go ahead. You see anything over there? I know that Joe has probably said, I don't see anything, but if I ain't hear a cough, yeah. I'll kill him. I don't care. He's mean. He's bad. Praise God. You need a Joab. Yeah. I need a Joab. Who don't want a Joab? Somebody just even looks at you with a curled up lip, he'll go slap them and tell them to smile. Man of God's in town. Amen. Then the Bible said, when David got up there, those leaders said, he brought him come out there and said, David, we served under Saul. While we served Saul, you saved us. You helped us. You blessed us. Said, David, we want you to be king. Seven years and six months later, the word came to David and said, all the council of Israel has called for you. Here come David and Joab and all them men again. They're sticking their necks out, brother. It'll either work or it won't. Either they hate him or they love him. And when they get into town, the men and elders of the city said, David, we would have thee to rule, oh hallelujah, over us. Amen. Somebody say the glory is on the move. I mean the glory is going. It's gone all the way to Zion now. And David is now sitting at the top of Zion, ruling and reigning, and God give him rest on every side. Hello. Let me tell you what he's fixing to do. He's fixing to turn it all over to his son. Yeah. Right. He's fixing to turn the kingdom over to his son. And that's where we'll take up tonight. Jesus has turned his kingdom over to a son. And the son has got the same glory as the father. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And we'll, that's where we read this morning. And hallelujah for this time in the Lord. All that he said. I thank you for it. 
Praise God. You be back here tonight and hear what the rest of the story, how it goes and what all God does for us. And thank you for being here. Happy Father's Day to you dads one more time. And God bless you, saints, as you're dismissed today. Amen.